Um, I, I'd like to make a note before I start my statement that we received the administration's prepared testimony less than an hour before this hearing. And uh, when I think back about uh, how long this hearing's been scheduled, uh, weeks at least, uh, on my calendar, it really does reduce the effectiveness of the hearing when the members and when the staff can't review the administration position. In over 10 years of chairing or serving as ranking member, this is the worst showing I've seen, and I just wanted to make note of it, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, nuclear technology is spreading, spreading very rapidly. By one estimate, over 500 nuclear plants are under construction or are planned worldwide. Nuclear energy certainly has its advantages. Its risks are substantial, though, especially as developing countries utilize that technology. The threats of terrorist attack against nuclear facilities, nuclear theft, and states developing nuclear weapons, as in Iran, are all too real. This week, the NPT Review Conference kicked off. For too long, the NPT's Article 4, so-called right to possess all elements of nuclear technology, particularly the fuel cycle, has gone unchallenged. This gutting of the NPT gives Iran a leg up as it relentlessly develops its uranium enrichment capacity, placing nuclear weapons within its very close reach. This dims my enthusiasm for the spread of nuclear energy. The Obama administration, like previous ones, has unwisely conceded any NPT state's right to take this reckless enrichment course. Instead, the administration is seeking bilateral agreements with countries, many in the Middle East, that they won't enrich uranium. This is what the Bush administration did with the centerpiece, being the nuclear cooperation agreement with the United Arab Emirates, in which the UAE commits not to enrich. While the goal is good, other countries are balking, and these bilateral agreements are piecemeal. Some exporters of nuclear technology are sure to work around them. The administration must do a better job driving the nuclear suppliers group to restrict the export of sensitive technology. Meanwhile, the, the volatile Middle East is racing toward nuclearization. Most every country in the region is developing or has expressed interest in developing nuclear facilities. The motives are mixed, but surely the prospect of a nuclear-armed Iran looms large. Addressing Iran is a very forceful way, in a very forceful way, and you and I serve on that conference committee, Chairman, would certainly take steam out of this rush. The process for approving nuclear cooperation agreements puts con Congress in the cheap seats. An agreement is okayed unless both congressional bodies act to disapprove and get a veto-proof margin at that. The ranking member of the full committee introduced legislation earlier this con Congress to reverse that process, requiring congressional approval, which I have co-sponsored. I'm alarmed that the administration is pushing to approve a nuclear cooperation agreement with Russia. That agreement was pulled nearly two years ago. With Russia resisting meaningful sanctions on Iran, never mind its role in Iran's nuclear and missile programs, the timing couldn't be worse. The provision is now being conferenced in the Iran sanctions bill, and um, I think that uh, from my standpoint, I'd conclude, Mr. Chairman, by saying what I said at the conference committee opening last week, to pass an Iran sanctions bill that this administration can eviscerate through maladministration, as it and others have done with existing Iran sanctions, would be worse than doing nothing. To merely pretend that we did something would be a harmful charade. The conference must produce dramatic, 
severe sanctions. The time for calibration is long gone. So it's very unfortunate that the administration is pressing for waivers and carve-outs to gut the bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.